Hey there. Listen, before we get started, I wanted to share with you this special chakra meditation. If you haven't already got your download of it, you can use the link below to get it ASAP. Cheers and enjoy the video. When we develop the heart chakra, we begin to influence our surroundings with our spiritual presence. When we develop the throat chakra, we influence our country with our presence. When we develop the crown chakra, we influence the world without doing anything. Hidden in the chakra system we all know and love, there is a secret code that will help us to ascend to higher consciousness much faster. Recalling the concept of the mirror wall or the half step, generally speaking, Despite their existence, you won't really know that they're there until you've mastered all of the lower centers to a certain degree. So for the most part, when you're growing up, you're usually in the three lower chakras like we talked about earlier. You may be in all of them at once or maybe mostly in one and partly in the others, or it could be constantly moving, some kind of blend or a combination of all three. Interestingly though, this pattern is true not just of a person, but of a country, a planet, a galaxy, or anything living as everything alive arguably has its own chakras, even Mother Earth herself. At any level of existence, this same pattern of movement occurs. Let's take a country like the United States, for example. This is a brand new country in comparison to the old world. Compared to other countries such as those in Europe or India or even China, modern America is just a wee little baby and one that has largely ignored the wisdom and spiritual advances of others, such as the First Nations people for a long time. Up until the 1950s, the vast majority of people in America were in one of the three lower chakras. Not everybody, of course, but most. Their biggest concerns in life revolved around power, money, materialism, houses, cars, sex, food, especially with survival aspects, making sure they've stored up enough money to feel secure. It was a very materialistic world that set the stage for the consumer culture of the 1950s America that was outlined in such great classics of American literature. Revolutionary Road, Death of a Salesman, Slaughterhouse-Five, as well as the poetry of Robert Lull, who referred to the period as the tranquilized 50s. You know, the best phrase about this whole thing that summarizes the situation perfectly, and to a certain extent echoes the world today, comes from the comic book Watchmen by Alan Moore. When visiting a seemingly war-torn New York City, seeing protesters stealing TVs and being consumed by their own consumer culture, the character Night Owl asks the comedian, whatever happened to the American dream? And his friend looks at him dead in the eye, laughs and says, Heh, what happened? It came true, you're looking at it. But something did happen. In the 1960s, the act of changing one's consciousness began to rapidly alter what was thought to be normal. We had the first psychedelic revolution, and while the world's governments quickly put the hammer down, the damage, or blessing, was done. People began to practice meditation and enter into their own higher centers. The movement was spearheaded by many artists, such as the Beatles, who engaged in transcendental meditation when recording the famous White Album while staying at an ashram in India. They, along with many other artists, such as Jimi Hendrix, even made use of LSD to produce wild and innovative periods of creativity that changed music and counterculture forever. Now, please understand, America was not the first to do this. If you go to an old country like India, Tibet, and certain parts of China, you'll find that at some point in their history, they also moved into their higher centers. They, as a country, moved through the mirror wall, as many legendary yogis such as Yogananda have described. While India may struggle financially, they have a tremendous wealth of spirituality. To that end, you can observe that there is a difference between moving into the higher centers as a country rather than as a species. It isn't really a fully enlightened state, but rather a more conscious one of their individual collective. As they moved through these higher centers, they would have eventually come to another mirror wall at the crown, keeping the focus to this new realm and everything that they have discovered before. A funny thing about mirror walls, once a person, family, group, city, or country moves beyond the first one, they are never the same again. Once they know that there's something more to life than what they have previously thought, they'll spend the rest of their life trying to figure out how to get back to those upper centers, even if they had just a fleeting experience of those higher worlds. In terms of a person or a country, once it gets above the first half step moving into the heart, the sound currents, the geometries, and the spiritual nature of things, 
What sometimes happens is that they lose their concern about the lower centers of consciousness. They sort of stop seeming to care about their physical side as much, like whether their house is nice or even if they have a house anymore. They're more concerned about the information, their learning and their experiences that they're having in relationships with nature and each other in higher consciousness. You see it all the time with hippies, but now I'm on a tangent. So sometimes when you look at these older countries, they seem to be physically almost devastated because their whole focus is trying to find out what reality is like on these higher levels. Ultimately, they begin to crave more connection, more communication, more family over material wealth. Once a country actually moves through the final mirror wall into the eighth chakra together, which is very difficult, mind you, their main concern is what happens after death, which often means ego death. Their focus becomes the next level of life and they reset to the root of a new, higher cycle. So again, the country isn't concerned with physically dying. It's not like some mass suicide or anything weird like that. Rather, it's about what's next for everything that they've learned in their journey so far, the next cycle beginning. We might think of this in relationship to say ancient Egypt. Branches of culture were created. Wisdom was taught to foreigners and trade was established. New cultures and new societies formed with different groups of the world merging and expanding together. Ancient Egypt essentially died or passed into new cycles and new worlds were born as a result, many of which adopted or integrated and even transformed the ancient Egyptian teachings into something new. So how might this relate with us personally or even looking at us as a species? Well, even though on many levels, humanity as a whole is still operating in the lower centers, there are aspects of us that are moving into a higher awareness and beyond the crown. We are in a profound age of information right now. As we evolve as a species, expanding our understanding of everything, our new understanding is changing the way that we live physically. Ultimately, this is the quote unquote death stage beyond the crown and a rebirth of the root all over again. Modern technology gives us a glimpse of this in a profound way. The industrial revolution a few hundred years ago gave birth to a wide array of new advances for humanity, but the technology was still in its infancy and we didn't really know what we were doing to the world in a big picture kind of way. For running engines and motors from engineering plants to the invention of automobiles, we burned and refined oil in mass to stimulate the world's economy in tremendous ways. For a long time, this was a really great thing for us as a species. It connected us and created a new level of society. However, with all that we know today, we are now seeing that perhaps drilling so much oil and plowing down rainforests and polluting the oceans may not be the best thing for anyone or even the natural world. With this new expansive perception, it sends us out of the crown and back to the root with new information than we had before and new questions are asked. How can we transform our current technology to be sustainable? How can we birth a new paradigm for all of life on earth? There's no question that we've peaked at the life cycle for the fossil fuel industry, which will have no choice but to transition sooner than later. And the more people that get on board with this, the faster we all move towards a sustainable, cleaner future for all of us. This is just one microcosmic example of a larger human story, but it's a rather important one. If we can see the pattern of awakening and physical change and see how it relates both personally and collectively, it makes it smoother for all of us to let go of old ways of thinking and move into a higher, better world for all of us that much faster. And as it were, Perhaps one of the most ultimate of means by which to do this, to bring higher light and awareness to the world is by activating the light body.